Hi friends, welcome to Heart and Homestead with Dawn and welcome to what will eventually be a finished dining room. I'm super excited to be here with you today to start our Titus II uh, study journey. And today we're going to get into that study by talking a little bit about the background of the book and then we'll dive into the actual uh, verses, Titus 2, 3 through 5. So if you're ready, let's get this study going. I'm excited. I hope you are. Okay, friends, before we get into the study of Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5, I want to do a little bit of a background history with you. The book of, or the letter or the book of Titus was written by Paul to Titus. And Titus was an actual disciple of Paul. And we know this by reading in chapter 1, starting in verse 1, it says, Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. So Paul is the author. Who is he writing this book to? Jump down to verse 4, to Titus. And listen to how Paul refers to Titus. My true child in common faith. What a beautiful image of their relationship. And what a great example for us to emulate as we study the older woman and the younger woman. Titus was a disciple of Paul. Paul was his teacher, but Paul looked at Titus as a child, a true child in faith, his child. And I'm sure that, Ch that Titus looked at Paul as a spiritual father. So this is a great beginning for us as we study the older woman, younger woman relationship. Now, what was the purpose of this letter of Titus? Well, Paul was advising Titus in his responsibilities of supervising the churches on the island of Crete. Now, I want to tell you why. Let's jump down chapter 1, verse 12. The Cretan people are characterized as such. It says, one of themselves, a prophet of their own, said Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. For this cause, reprove them severely that they may be sound in the faith, not paying attention to Jewish myths and commandments of the men who turn away from the truth. So Paul is discipling Titus and preparing him to make disciples of others, much like what we're going to be doing in this study. Now let's take a look at chapter 2, starting in verse 3, which will begin our Titus 2, 3 through 5 study of the older woman, younger woman. So it says, Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good, that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be dishonored. There is so much meat in those couple of little verses. So I don't really want to miss any of it by just reading through it and doing one teaching on all those verses. I want to start with the very beginning. And the first word is the first two words are older women. So let's identify who the older women are. I looked up the Greek word for older women in the Strong's Concordance. And the reason I looked up the Greek word is because Titus is in the New Testament. So when you're studying the New Testament, the New Testament was originally written in Greek. The Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew and Aramaic. So I looked up the definition of older woman as it's used in Titus chapter 2. And the Strong's word, if you want to look it up yourself, the Strong's number is 4247. And the word is Presbutis. Now, I'm sure that I am not pronouncing that correctly, but it simply means aged woman. It does not refer to a position of leadership. It just simply means aged woman. Some scholars and theologians, of which I am neither, I am just a disciple of Jesus Christ that loves to study his word, and I am an older woman, 
um, will say that this older woman is characterized by being of the age 50 years or older. The next word in that verse is likewise. So older women, likewise. Whenever we see words like likewise or that, we need to ask ourselves, like what? What are they saying? Older women, likewise. In order to really know what that verse is referring to, because it says likewise, we need to go back and read the verses that are before it. So we're going to go back to Titus 2, chapter, chapter 2, verse 1. But as for you, speak the things which are fitting for sound doctrine. Older men are to be temperate, dignified, sensible, sound in faith, in love, in perseverance. Older women likewise. So the older woman in verse three is one who is characterized by having the godly qualities that are also listed in verse two, as well as all of the godly character traits that are listed in verse three. So she is to be firmly rooted in God's word. That's the first quality of an older woman. Why is it important that she be firmly rooted in God's word? How can she possibly encourage or teach younger women that which she does not possess herself? I want to look at uh, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. It says, For among them are those who enter into households and captivate weak women weighed down with sins, led on by various impulses, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. An older woman must be characterized by being strong and firmly rooted in the word of God that she may be able to rightly divide God's word, rightly divide it, that she might be able to truly impart it because she has studied it and because she has learned it, because she has lived it. Very important in order to make disciples. She is also to be temperate or self-controlled in her behavior. Now, does this mean that she has to be perfect and not have a temper at all? I don't think so, because I don't believe that we are sinless. I believe that we are to sin less. So there are going to be times that we might lose our temper that we're not temperate, that we don't practice self-control. But here's the difference. The older woman is characterized as one who is self-controlled or temperate in her behavior, meaning that she is more, she spends more time being self-controlled and temperate than she does losing her temper. That is how we characterize somebody, right? Not that they lose their temper once in a while and then repent of that, but that they are characterized as one being of sound mind and strong. So in other words, she's not characterized as being a hothead. She is also one who is to be dignified in her behavior, like sensible. And she's one that is respectful, but she's also respected. When I think about this older woman, I can't help but think about the Proverbs 31 woman. Now listen, the Proverbs 31 woman she did not accomplish everything that you read in Proverbs 31 all in one day. This was her lifetime, right? This was her lifetime, but it is certainly something that we should emulate to be. So the Proverbs 31 woman, if we, go, if we turn there and we read at verse 21, it says, She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all of her household are clothed with scarlet. Verse 23, Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. 25, strength and dignity are her clothing and she smiles at the future. She opens her mouth in wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the product of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. Her husband is known in the gates because of her. She has a reputation. Now, 
I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here, but she has a reputation, as should the older woman have a reputation in her community as being one who is a hard worker, who is being one who is self-controlled, one who is dignified. This Proverbs 31 woman, she buys and sells things. And her husband is known at the city gates when he sits among the elders because of her reputation. Now, we're not supposed to be concerned about what other people think of us, except when it comes to the things of the Lord, right? Um, uh, Proverbs 22, it says in Proverbs 22, um, a, a good name is better than fine gold and glorious riches. And there's a reason for it. And it is not for self gain at all. And we're going to get to what that reason is. I'm jumping a little bit ahead of myself. So the older woman is to possess these qualities if she is going to, in fact, be able to teach them to the younger woman. She is also to be reverent in her behavior, we're told in Titus. It says, uh, older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior. She is to be reverent in her behavior. And we're going to look at a closer look at in our next study on what the word reverent really means, because I honestly don't think that we understand what the word reverent means and how we can apply it in our daily life. She is not to be a malicious go gossip, the older woman. How easy is that to fall into, especially in today's days? And a lot of times we fall into gossip under the guise of praying for someone. We have to be very careful. May the Lord give us wisdom, wisdom, in, in doing this, right? Gossip has two roles. One is the person who is speaking, but the other is the one who's listening. So if you're listening to somebody else who's gossiping and you're not holding that person accountable, then you are participating and are as guilty as the one who gossips. We need to be really careful um, because you know what? There are people that are out there that are mean and good, even our own family members that are watching and listening to us because we call ourselves born again Christians, right? They they're looking for perfection in us. They don't understand that we're not perfect. We're forgiven, right? But they are looking. So be really careful, especially with that gossip thing. Super easy to get ensnared in gossip. And then the, after that, it says she is also not to be enslaved to much wine. It says in verse three, I just want to stop there for a minute. Now, Enslaved to much wine is, um, if we take that into context, again, remembering that this is a letter that was written by Paul to Titus, and it was because of what was going on on the island of Crete. And my understanding is that the women during that day um, had a lot of time, and as they maybe were pressing wine or pressing grapes to make wine, maybe drank a little bit too much wine, and then what happened after they drank too much wine? they started gossiping among each other. And so, um, but I'm going to bring it here now into our century. What are some things that you might be enslaved to? What are some things that we might be enslaved to beyond wine? I don't have a problem with wine. Wine isn't an issue for me. Carbohydrates, that's another issue for me. I love carbohydrates. I'm Italian. I love my, my breads and my pastas. Um, and maybe we're going to say, oh, it's not that big of a thing, right? But um, gluttony is a big thing. And when we eat beyond being full, that could be considered gluttony, right? Uh, there's a scripture in one of the Proverbs that says, um, when you're seated at the king's table, if you're taken to gluttony, put a knife to your throat. That's pretty harsh. That's pretty harsh. What about um, electronics, social media? You know, I am part of two independent uh, sales companies that I could become enslaved to that very easily. So think about, think about that, you know, as you, as you listen to this teaching and as you read through these, don't, don't read, stop and eat them. Thy words I have found and thy words I have eaten and they have become unto me the joy and the delight of my heart. I think that's in Jeremiah. I'm not positive. Don't quote me. I should have written it down, but we want to eat. We want to feed on God's word. We don't want to just read through it like it's a book. It's okay to do that. You know, you want to do that once a year as a goal, read through God's word. But really, if you want to benefit and grow um, as a, a woman, you want to, as a person, you want to sit and eat God's word. So when it says here to not be enslaved to much wine, and I could again say, 
maybe that's not an issue, don't skip over that. What are you enslaved to? Let's be real um, and hold each other accountable with that. What are we enslaved to? So we're going to take a look um, at these verses and we're going to break them down a little bit more and more as we go on each each week. Next week, uh, next lesson, not next, next week, we're going to look at that word reverence, like I said. For now, I want to look at the two main reasons that this older woman is to possess these godly traits. I've already discussed the first reason with you, and that is so that she can then impart them to the younger woman. Um, but there's another reason. And if we read in chapter two, verse five, it gives us the main reason. It says the very last part of verse five, that the word of God may not be dishonored. See, this life is really not about you. And it's not about me. It's about God and advancing his kingdom on earth. Did you know that a man can be disqualified from being an elder in a church if his household is not in order? And so remember before I said that people are watching, even some well-meaning family members are going to be watching you because you have the label of being a born again Christian and they're going to be looking for you to make a mistake. It's happened to me um, in my, my own family. I'll tell you a quick little story that one time I was at my mom's house and a friend had called me on the phone and I got off the phone with that friend and somebody else had called me on the phone and I was repeating something that the first friend had said. And one of my sisters was there and she looked at me and said, Dawn, isn't that gossip? And I, I had to stop and I said, you know what? You're right. It is gossip. And I'm sorry. And then I called back both women and said, hey, this is what just happened. And I want to say, I'm sorry. So people are watching. And I'm sure that when my sister said that to me, she was saying it in jest, but it wasn't jest. It was a conviction of the Holy Spirit on my part. If you have a Christian fish symbol or, or another like bumper sticker or something on the back of your car, be sure that people are watching how you drive, waiting to see how patient you are when you're sitting in traffic. If you wear a Christian symbol around your neck and you're in a long line at a grocery store, be sure that people are watching. How are you going to respond? Let no unwholesome word come forth from your mouth, but only that which is pleasing and uplifting, edifying, Scripture tells us. People are listening and people are watching. Has any of this ever happened to you? So, my admonition to you is let's eat the Word of God. Let's remember the mandate that Paul gave to the Corinthians. I'm going to turn to it and read it to you. 1 Corinthians 11. One of my favorite verses. 1 Corinthians 11, Paul says to the Corinthians, Be imitators of me just also as I am of Christ. That's the whole purpose of this. We are to find an older woman that possesses the godly character traits that we spoke about earlier. We are to make them our own. And then we are to duplicate them, replicate them in the life of somebody younger than us. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. I'd love to know your comments and your thoughts um, below in the comments here. Did you find an older woman? Or if you're an older woman, have you found a younger woman? If you're an older woman, did any of what I say resonate with you? Do you find any of it challenging? It's not easy. And again, I'm not saying that we're to be perfect, but we are to be real, to be genuine, to be transparent, to be vulnerable, to admit our weaknesses, to say, I'm sorry when we have fallen short, to ask forgiveness of those we need to ask forgiveness of. If we want to truly emulate Christ and pour him into the lives of others. 
Um, if you like this content and you aren't already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you did like it, please give me a thumbs up. I'd love to hear from you. If you comment below, please share. And uh, let's end this time together in prayer. Our next study is going to be on reverent in behavior and what that means. So let's pray. So Father, I just thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be able to meet together with older women and younger women, Lord, even if not face to face uh, through social media. I thank you, Lord, that you have not left us alone, but that you have given us your Holy Spirit as a helpmate, Lord God, and um, to reveal the truths of your word to us, to convict us of sin. Father, I pray as we eat your word together, Lord, that it would not be something that goes in one ear and out the other, but that it will be something that we'll be able to meditate on morning, noon, and night, that we'll be able to apply to our daily lives, that we'll be able to share with those that are around about us, Lord, that we would become like rivers of living water, that as your Holy Spirit pours into us, it will overflow out of us into the lives of those around about us, Lord, that we will be able to make disciples who make disciples who make disciples, and all, not so that we can have a name or a reputation, but that you might be glorified and that your word might not be dishonored. So thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for all that are watching, Lord. Thank you for those that are seeking an older woman. I pray, Lord, that those younger women that want an older woman in their life to help them walk through this life, Lord, that you would lead them to the perfect person. And those older women that have so much to give, that you would lead them to a younger woman who wants what they have, Lord God. And that together we can make an impact around the world that has never been seen before. Let us, let us have a Titus II woman movement, Lord. And let it glorify you in the name that is above all names, that one day at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. To him be the glory, the honor, and the power now and forever. Amen. Thanks for watching.